This is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And here we are on Tuesday, which is launch day for Mac OS Sierra. And so, as I usually do, I wanted to give you a walkthrough of the upgrade process just so you can get a feel for, uh, you know, the entire uh, steps in the process. Sometimes things might hang a little longer than you expect, and so it's always nice just to have an idea of how everything lays out and how the upgrade process goes. Of course, I'll be doing uh, some upgrade stuff for uh, OS X server as well, uh, but in this case, I'm just going to do the upgrade of the OS first before I do the upgrade of the server application. So a couple of things uh, to keep in mind. Uh, one of the things that did come out uh, today, I saw in the, uh, in the news, uh, on the upgrade was that if you're running a ScanSnap, uh, ScanSnap, uh, Fujitsu has said that they do have some problems with PDFs that you've even scanned in the past, uh, having pages get erased or changed, and I guess there's some problem for them with the uh, PDF engine. I've read other people who have tried it and haven't had that problem. Uh, but if you are using a Fujitsu ScanSnap, I would recommend either waiting until Fujitsu says that uh, it's all clear, or at least make sure that you've got uh, backups of all of your PDFs so that you don't have to worry about that. And don't open them in Sierra until uh, Fujitsu's checked it out and said everything's good. So I just want to lay that out there because that is one thing that's happened. Now, before you upgrade, you can see here I'm on the Mac App Store. I've already downloaded my copy. Uh, there's a few things that you'll want to do uh, before you do that. Now, the first is just to make sure that your Mac is eligible for the upgrade. So if you just go over to uh, Apple site here, uh, you can see this is on the upgrade page. And it gives you an idea of what you need to upgrade. And you can even check your Mac hardware. Uh, again, they say to have a, a bootable clone backup. Uh, upgrading's free. Here's the actual general system requirements. Nice thing is you can upgrade from 10.7 all the way up to Sierra. You don't have to upgrade in between. And then here's all the hardware requirements. And so it does go back pretty far. A couple of things to keep in mind um, down here. You can see that there are certain features that uh, require certain systems. So if you've got an older system, you won't be able to do some of these things. For instance, handoff, instant hotspot, universal clipboard. Uh, you've got to have Macs that meet this criteria. Uh, in my case, I've got a 2011 so that I'm using for this upgrade, so I won't be able to show you some of these things. Uh, but I just wanted to show you that. Again, the auto unlock. You need models that are 2013 and earlier. You can see Apple Pay support needs certain models. So it is uh, kind of important just to kind of take a look at what uh, you need in terms of your various, um, you know, the various features that you want to look at. Your model may not support it depending on uh, how old your Mac device is. So it's not just whether or not you can upgrade it or not. It's also uh, whether or not you can use some of the features uh, that are built into um, Mac OS Sierra. So I just wanted to show you that. Now, another thing you'll want to do before you upgrade is uh, just check to make sure that your favorite apps work uh, with uh, Mac OS Sierra. And so uh, this website here, Roaring Apps, is uh, kind of a favorite. They track that sort of thing. You can see by different operating systems whether or not certain apps work. And so, uh, again, the check mark works fine. Some problems doesn't work, or then you have no data. So these ones have no data on them. Uh, but you can kind of go through and take a look to see if uh, some of your favorite apps applications work and if you ones that you rely on don't work then you're going to want to up, uh, wait to upgrade until uh, your developer has upgraded their apps to fit and to work with uh, Mac OS Sierra. So it's a very important thing that you want to check out and make sure you do. Uh, so let me just go ahead and put that down. Now one of the other things you're going to want to do is make sure that you do have a bootable clone um, of your um, uh, main hard drive. The reason I recommend that is because if something goes wrong you can just put it right back into place and it won't be any problem. Um, one of my favorites here is Super Duper, uh, which is uh, a nice uh, program. You can use it for free uh, unless you want to have the scheduling features of continually upgrading um, and having it update on a schedule, which is something I would recommend uh, that you always have that happening in the background. Uh, the software has worked great for me, and so you can check out Super Duper. It's very simple. You're copying from one drive to the other, and you're making sure you're backing up all of your files. And then that drive that you're copying to, you want it to be an external drive, allows you to boot from that drive if you need to in the future uh, to do your restore um, or as I'll show you in another screencast uh, works very uh, well to do a clean install. Uh, so let me just go ahead and put that down but just wanted to show you uh, that that was there as well. 
Now, once you've downloaded the installer, uh, there is one more thing that I recommend. And let me just pull up a finder window here. What I recommend is that you take uh, this install Mac OS Sierra and you just make a copy of it. Uh, maybe move it to another drive or something like that. So that in the future, uh, you don't have to download it again. Uh, sometimes this download can take a while to get onto your Mac, depending on uh, whether the Apple servers are being hit or not and so you want to have another copy of that so you don't have to go back and wait to download it again to install it or maybe you're not you know, maybe you don't have uh, internet coverage at the time and you still want to do the install so it's always good to have a backup of this somewhere so that you uh, have it available to use let me just go ahead and uh, pop that down so now that we've got all these uh, pieces in place again you might probably want to check all of your software too to make sure that uh, it's updated and upgraded to be compatible uh, you can come over here to the updates area <clears throat> it'll show you all the different things that uh, you can update uh, you can see I've got a few apps here including it looks like they released Mac OS server uh, one of the things you'll notice it's uh, version 5.2 so it looks like Apple's not going through updating the server completely with every iteration of the OS uh, but rather uh, may be doing some point updates along the way so I just want to point that out but we'll talk about that more later so once you've got your software update and you feel like you're ready to go uh, then we can go ahead and get started with the upgrade okay so here we are we've got the installer launched and so we're gonna go ahead and go through the process we're gonna click continue on here and so it's gonna ask us to agree with the licensing agreement we're gonna agree twice and then you choose the disk that you want to install it on and so for me I'm just gonna use my main uh, hard drive here and I'm just gonna click on install now one of the things that's gonna happen is it's gonna go through this process of downloading some information and then when we get to the other side of that uh, my recording software is gonna cut out and so then I'll go to my other camera to show you what it looks like on my screen so let's go ahead and hit install uh, again it supports uh, server version 5.2 so in installing this on the volume will disable the current server until I download and install the other server version so what's nice is it does warn you if you're running server that your server services are going to be interrupted so I'm gonna go ahead and just say continue installing so I'm gonna do that later it's gonna ask me to authenticate and once I've done that then I'm going to say uh, add helper and now it's going to start uh, downloading the information so I'm going to go ahead and let that do that I'll let you know how long it takes to download what we need and then we will go from there okay so here we are it started that reboot and it's telling us it's going to take about 29 minutes or so uh, to install and so that's what it says up here now like I said I'm going to show you what it looks like when we get to the end just to make sure that it actually does take that long so that you know what to expect. Again, your systems will vary uh, depending on what machine you're using, but it, at least it'll give you a ballpark in terms of how long it takes and what happens when you get close to the end. Okay, so the Mac restarted. It said it had 11 minutes to go on it, which means it had, uh, it just kind of skipped over those 11 minutes. Uh, it's taken about, um, probably about 30 to 35 minutes uh, to do the upgrade so I think maybe what happened was it looks like it's pretty accurate pretty close to where it started from it may be off by about six minutes from what it said when it started it started with 28 it actually took about 31 or so or maybe 34 so it was off by a little bit and then it looks like maybe it just launched ahead so this is a restart after it's gone through its process of uh, the first uh, update bar and so we're going to go ahead and watch this and I will tell you how long it takes to get to the end of this one. Okay, so here we are. We've got about 15 minutes remaining. Uh, at one point the screen did go black for a second and I got kind of the spinning mouse and then it came right back into the white screen here uh, telling me I've got about 15 minutes remaining. So I uh, just want to let you know that in case that happens to you. Just let it ride. Uh, it comes back at least it did for me and so it should be doing its thing now so again I'm gonna let this continue to go and I'll come back and show you what it looks like when we get to the end okay so we are down to about uh, less than a minute remaining uh, again when that comes up those of you that have done these installs before know that it's not a literal uh, one minute or less than a minute remaining It can sometimes last a while uh, which is why it's always good to to just know that so you can give it a little bit of time uh, so far in our process it's taken about oh, about 21 minutes or so to get to this spot so that 15 minutes was actually about 21 or so 
and that's up to this point. Uh, this is still still running. We still have some bar left, um, but I wanted to uh, make sure I tuned into this so you could see it because there's a tendency to, there we go, so really quickly get to the end of the bar. And here we are at the login screen. So let me just go ahead and log in. And I'm just going to hit enter. And here we go through the sign-in process. We're going to walk through kind of like you do with a new install in a lot of ways. So let me go ahead and put my password in here. Okay. And now we'll go ahead and continue. And I do have two-factor authentication set up, so I'm going to go ahead and just send the, uh, send the text there to get the number. And I need to agree to the terms and conditions, which I'll do here. I'll just say agree and agree again. And now it's going to set up iCloud for me and walk me through this uh, process here and hopefully launch my desktop. May take me to another setting, yes, the diagnostic stuff. I'm just going to go ahead and pass that by. And then it gives me the option to enable Siri. Uh, so you can send a message or dictate a note. And so I'm going to go ahead and enable it and just leave that on there. Say continue. Now it's going to set up my Mac and go through the familiar process there and leads me to my desktop. So I'm going to go ahead and convert over to my desktop and I'll show you what it looks like on the other side. Okay, so here we are on the desktop with our upgrade to Mac OS Sierra. Uh, so far it looks like everything has worked okay. Uh, looking at the desktop, uh, now we've got this little Siri icon down here and so uh, we know things are, are going in the right direction. Uh, what I'll do is I'll be doing some screencasts to kind of show you some of the uh, new features and options, uh, but just wanted to walk you through that process. Again, that took about an hour, uh, give or take a few minutes, so uh, give yourself enough time. Again, your mileage will vary on that, but this is a 2011 uh, Mac Mini, so yours may actually go a little faster than that just depending on your, uh, your machine. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.